Hello, 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 John Mason. How is everybody? Were you as nauseated and angry as I was with the raid on Wednesday on our nation's capital by an enemy within? Not some foreign entity, but the homegrown terrorist born in the USA, encouraged by Donald Trump, and his minions and his lackeys and his brood of vipers, including Don Jr. and Rudy Giuliani and his enablers in Congress, such as Josh Hawley of the Senators Josh Hawley of Missouri and Ted Cruz of Texas, and in the House Kevin McCarthy and Jim Jordan and others. You know the brood. There's a whole list of them out there. Know their name and spread their shame. That's what I say. Again, these idiots. First, Trump holds this rally in D.C. They, everybody knew they were going to be violent. They, every, they, these goons behind them, the Proud Boys and the QAnon conspiracy theory, and they knew the, violent, the history of violence they had. But they didn't prepare properly. You think they would prepare properly? At least like they did in June when the when the Black Lives Matter movement had their demonstration in uh, D.C. A nice peaceful demonstration until Donald Trump ordered federal agents and troops to fire on their own citizens so he can so he can march towards uh, with some of his staff to march towards uh, the historic church to hold a Bible, a Bible, a, a book of which he knows nothing of. Anyway, at this rally, uh, Trump urges uh, uh, urges on uh, his minions, his followers, the disciples, his worshippers, and they proceed to crowd up right up against uh, the Capitol, and all of a sudden they decide to raid the Capitol building itself crawling over walls, smashing windows open to break in, and the Capitol Police weren't able to do anything. What is up with that? The consensus is, and I agree with it, if this was a, these people, if these were people of color or a left-wing group or working-class group, uh, they would be slaughtered. But no, the nice white people expressing their discontent and they ransacked, and they went in, ransacked uh, uh, the various congressional offices, the House chamber, uh, the Speaker's office, and and Rotunda, in an attempt to uh, try to stop the uh, account of the Electoral College. But some brave and wise uh, Senate staffers took the big leather box that the uh, that the ballots for the Electoral College votes were in and took him down to secure place with the Congress members. The same Congress members who were supporting Trump had to bunk, hunker down in the bunker against the people they were egging on, against the people who were encouraging uh, Trump's uh, conspiracy theories, his wild, weird, lying claims that uh, a voter fraud, that folks, folks uh, screwed up voting machines and fake ballots, all that crap. And this is how Trump repays them. And what are the results? Five people were killed, including uh, a Trump supporter. A young woman got killed. For It's a tragedy. I know she's a Trump supporter. I can't stand her for that. But, she, but these things have consequences. People get killed in these incidents. And, and they, the Trumpist raiders acted like it was a big picnic or a party or something. They just walked around. It wasn't, they saw about, talked about it as a revolution, start of a revolution, but what revolution? I mean, when Lenin's Bolsheviks took over the Winter Palace in, in October of 1917, they didn't just 
ransacked the place and leave them? They were there to stay. They were there to form a government. What were they there for? Just walk in, make a fool of themselves, smash things up, and walk out. And they were free to walk out. No consequences, no problem. Although some few, a few people lost their jobs and and some members of Trump's cabinet and staff have resigned. Fortunately, the Congress members and senators went about the serious business of tallying and confirming the Electoral College votes. And it is official. Joseph R. Biden will be our next president and Kamala Harris will be our next vice president. Good. Now, but still we have, uh, how many days? Uh, 12 days. 12 days we're stuck with that idiot. Unless some members of the cabinet and Pence take their heads out of their asses and invoke the 25th Amendment, which says that if the president is proven incapable of uh, fulfilling his duties, the vice president takes over. This is serious. This is serious stuff. This is such a tragic day in our, in our his, in nation's history. And it showed, again, the, the reality of white privilege. And in earlier this week, the Republicans in the Pennsylvania State Senate rep would not allow the seating of a Democratic uh, senator. Duly elected, charges of voter fraud proven wrong, and they wouldn't allow it. They wouldn't even allow the, the lieutenant governor who presides over the state senate in the chamber. But here we have a lot of conservative privilege, a lot of white skin privilege. Like they can get away with anything. If any of us on the left or people of color tried the same stuff, we'd be shot, we'd be prosecuted, we'd be out on the street begging for a job. We have to stand up. We have to organize ourselves. We have to organize our communities and, and fight against this. Be conscious of what's going on in the, in the world. Organize. And I have to say it, I know I'm a Democrat, I'm proud to be a Democrat committee person in my ward, but I, but it's not just partisanship when I say the Republican Party has to be eliminated. I mean, Trump didn't just come out of nowhere. The racism in the Republican Party started long before Trump. It started at least in 1964 in the Goldwater campaign, where he said he would never support the civil rights legislation. Then on to Nixon, we continued his uh, Southern strategy of uh, playing to white racist uh, sentiment, thinking that the civil, that uh, anti-poverty programs were only for black people. And they weren't. They were for all people of a working class, a lower class, uh, and race and class have intertwined in our, in our history. Race, we have to deal with both race and class. Nixon appealed to the, to the race issue, to racial uh, uh, anxiety of white people. And that when, and Reagan carried that on with uh, his old fables about the welfare queen having dozens of social security payments at one time of the young black buck uh, getting welfare, getting food stamps, all these myths, all, which he propagates, and the news media just goes along with it. The commercial news media just, it, and it, they always have this right of center balance, that bias, I've noticed. I particularly, NPR, they often 
uh, air to the right. It's just they want they just want to give always give conservatives uh, the, the benefit of a doubt. I'm sorry. I work in media. I have to say it. And and the, the media just goes along with uh, uh, just rebroadcasting conservative claims. Like conservatives and Republicans and white people, it's just got this sense of entitlement. Like uh, they should be running the sh uh, the government. They should be running society. And and anybody else, uh, people of color, Democrats, or working class people, are usurpers. They don't belong there. But we'll decide where we belong. We working class people aligning with people of color will band together and stand up to these jokers. We will assert ourselves. We will overcome racism. And an appropriate time is coming up for that, the Martin Luther King weekend. There will be a day of service, November, uh, January the, no, Monday, January the 18th. It will not be a day off. It will be a day on duty where we do some sort of community service project, like uh, picking up trash on the street or joining a food bank, clothing drive, what have you. To help people in our community. To put a human face on social problems like homelessness and food insecurity and joblessness and unemployment, health, lack of health care, what have you. They're, they're not our enemy. They're us. That's how we'll be a free nation again. Oh, and another thing, while I'm thinking about it. Eliminate the Electoral College. If it wasn't, the Electoral College has been the only way that Republicans for uh, the past uh, two decades have been able to attain power and stay in power. The Electoral College has so often uh, ignored the will of the voting public. It was an elitist uh, attempt uh, during the writing of the Constitution to give the st slave states uh, an unfair advantage because they knew the more industrialized and more populated northern states uh, would outvote them in Congress and in a straight uh, numerical majority. And they, and they were afraid of the tyranny of the, of the northern states uh, to and, and how it would affect their uh, peculiar institution, i.e. slavery. So, instead, it has been, the Electoral College has been nothing but a source of d division and disruption. I'm thinking now about uh, the election of 1876, where, where, where Ru Republican Rutherford B. Hayes uh, ran against Democrat Samuel Tilden for, Tilden for the presidency. And Tilden won the majority popular vote. However, there was a question about the uh, electoral votes in Florida. And, and they had an electoral, there was a commission formed and they hit upon the comp, on a compromise that the disputed electoral college votes would go to Hayes. And in exchange, the federal troops would be withdrawn from the South and Reconstruction would be ended and, 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 Jim, and, black pe and African American people would be thrown to the wolves of white racists and Jim Crow would be implemented. What a shameful thing. Eliminate the Electoral College. And implement an economic program of by and for the people. Okay. Let's do it. We can do it and we will. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Bye.